Welcome back to Test Double's intro course on end-to-end -end testing with Cypress. In the last video, you learned about real-world Happy Path tests. In this video, you will dive deeper into Happy Path testing with Cypress. You will write your first real-world Happy Path test, learn new Cypress commands to interact with forms, and learn how to use other kinds of selectors to find elements with the get command. Let's get started. First, make sure you have the backend server Cypress environment, frontend dev server, and Cypress itself running. Refer back to the repo readme and previous videos if you need a refresher on starting those up. Also, ensure you've started running the tasks.spec.js file in the Cypress browser runner by clicking on the file from the list of spec files in the Cypress app. We currently have an empty project board like many first-time users of the application. So the first action a real user might do would be to create a new task. That sounds like a great candidate for a real-world happy path test. Open up your task.spec.js file from the YAMS Cypress integration folder in your editor. Below your first test, add a new test with it using the test description creates a task. You need to click on the add task button like a real user. Inside the anonymous function, add this code. You again call the visit command to go to the project page. You also call the contains command again, passing in the text add task. Notice that you can call contains by itself without chaining off a previous command. Cypress will find the first element that contains the text add task. You may notice that add task is entirely capitalized in the app, but the text we're selecting has only the first letter of each word capitalized. This is because the actual text in the DOM only has each first letter capitalized. It's the CSS that is transforming the appearance of the text to be all capitalized. By default, Cypress honors case sensitivity when selecting elements with contains, so you have to make sure your selector matches what's actually in the DOM. To perform a case insensitive search, you can pass in the optional match case option set to false, or pass in a case insensitive regular expression. Next, you can chain off contains and call a new command, click. As its name suggests, the click command will click whatever the selected element from the command chain is. Unlike the contains or get command, the click command is a child command that must be called off a parent command like contains. Save the file. You should see the Cypress browser window refresh and the new test description appear on the left. Since the new test is below the previous test in the file, it should be the last test to run in the Cypress browser window too. So once the test finishes running, you should see the new task form on the right. Next, you need to provide a title for the new task, but you need a way to select the title input element. Remember that Cypress is driving a browser. I have Cypress running Chrome in my case. That means you can use your browser's DevTools to inspect the DOM. Open your DevTools and inspect the input. This input has a name attribute with the value title. That could work for selecting the element. We won't cover it in this video course, but Cypress also offers a selector playground that lets you select an element, and Cypress will then suggest a selector. It's a nice feature, but some of the selectors it may suggest are highly specific and could easily break if you make changes to your front-end app, leading to false failures. So we'll stick with using DevTools. Add this line underneath the click command. You use the get command to find the element by passing in a selector for an input element with the name attribute equal to title. You chain off that with the type command, passing in the title new task. As you might guess, the type command types its argument into the selected element. The type command is also a child command like the click command. Save the file. You should see the test run again and this time type the title into the input element. Great job so far! Before you fill out more of this form though, let's adjust what is typed in the input. Recall that end-to-end -end tests run against the real API and database. So if you were to run a test that creates a task multiple times, you would end up with multiple tasks in the database with the same title. Tasks from previous test runs will show up on the project board. 
that might make it challenging to select and make assertions against the current task in a test run. You will likely want something more elegant for your test, but an easy way to generate unique titles is to add a timestamp. Update your test like so. You add a title variable that concatenates the new task string with a timestamp thanks to JavaScript's date.now method and ES2015 template literal string syntax. Then you pass the title into the type command. Now, for every test run, you should have a unique title to ensure you can find the correct task in later assertions. Save the file, and you should see Cypress type the unique title. Next, let's say the user wants to change the status from the pre-filled value. In this case, you need a way to click on the status dropdown to show the available options and click to select one of the options. Again, use DevTools to inspect the dropdown. You have a div tag with lots of classes and other attributes. In general, you want to select on contained text or the most specific attribute that isn't a CSS class. CSS classes are more prone to be changed or moved around since they are used for styling. If that happened, then your test could start failing for irrelevant reasons, eating up your time debugging why the test started failing. You could select on the text backlog, since it's the pre-filled value, but that would couple this test to the assumption that backlog is always the pre-filled value. Looking at the other attributes, the ID would work great. IDs are supposed to be unique and are already typically used for selecting elements. We'll revisit this topic in a later video, as there are even better ways of selecting from the DOM in a more consistent manner. For now, we'll use the text and attributes we currently have at hand in the app's HTML. Add these lines to the bottom of the test. You use the get command with jQuery-like ID selector syntax to select the dropdown and click on it. Then you use contains to find the in progress option and click on it. Save the file. You should see Cypress expand the dropdown and click on in progress. Next, you need to provide a description. Similar to the title input, we can inspect the description input to figure out a selector. We see that it's a text area and has a name attribute too. Add this line to the bottom of the test. You use the get command to select the text area with a name attribute of description and type in the value do the thing. Save and Cypress should type out the description. Next, you need to give the task an estimate of level of effort. In this case, YAMS uses a Fibonacci scale for estimating level of effort. Inspect the element to see what you can select on. This dropdown also has a unique ID attribute, so let's use that. Add these lines to the bottom of the test. You select on the ID and click. Then you use contains to find the estimate option of 3 and click on it. Save the file, and you should see Cypress set the estimate to 3. Great, you're now filling out the form, but you still need to save the task and verify it's created. Add a line at the bottom of the test to select and click the Save button. Notice you again pass in a string that matches how it is capitalized in the DOM versus the transform text coming from CSS. Save the file. You should see Cypress fill out the whole form and click Save. Then the app should go back to the project page with the new task on the board and a success message displayed at the top of the screen. You can see with your own eyes that the app does indeed create a task, but you need your test to verify that. Let's do that by checking for the success message and verifying the task exists on the board in the correct status column. Add this line to the bottom of the test, but don't save the file yet. You use the contains command to verify the text created task eventually exists after saving. Now you need to determine if the card exists in the right column. Inspect with DevTools to see that the column also has a unique ID. Add this last line to the bottom of the test. You select the in progress column by its ID and verify somewhere down its DOM tree it contains the title of the task. This is why it was important that you generate a unique title for each task so you don't get a false positive by matching on a task from a previous test run. Save the file and you should see it create a task and verify it was created in the correct column. And that's it!
you've written your first real-world Happy Path test. Let's recap what you learned in this video. You wrote your first real-world Happy Path test. You learned interactive child commands like click and type. You used other kinds of selectors like name and ID attributes to find elements. And you also learned about the downsides of using class attributes for selecting elements. You're now ready to write your own real-world Happy Path test. In the next video, you will add another real-world Happy Path test, learning about other useful commands in Cypress, and why not to share persisted state between tests. Mm -hmm.